Hi, it's Ian from the Postal Hub Podcast. And Marek from Last Mile Experts. And we are The Last Mile Profits. This is the last word on The Last Mile. This video is created thanks to Modern Expo, one of the key players in the world's parcel locker market. Modern Expo's product portfolio includes innovative solutions with refrigeration and freezing cells, Bluetooth locks, and even personal parcel lockers. Marek, we're going to return to a really important topic, and that is the broadly sustainability kind of vehicles that we use in our delivery networks. I may even, Marek, if you're good, I'll let you mention out-of-home delivery. <laughs> well, um, let's start with one of the big announcements in the last couple of weeks, and that was from Canada Post. Canada Post has said that it will reach net zero by 2040 and also convert its entire delivery fleet, that's all 14,000 vehicles, to electric by 2040. I think they had an interim thing. Hang on, here we are. Uh, they will reach 50% electric fleet by 2030, 100% by 2040. And that's not far off what I think Deutsche Post DHL is committed to. And they've, oh, if you want to delve into their press release, I'll put a link to it down below talking about scope one and scope two and all those sorts of things, which is probably beyond the discussion today. But Mark, this is not an isolated case from Canada Post. We're seeing other postal operators, other e-commerce players, other private delivery operators committing to this sort of path. What's your, what are your comments? First of all, you know, the writing is on the wall because everybody's doing it. I think Royal Mail as well has got a fixed date by which they're going to be all electric. And probably if you think about the wider picture, they're not going to have a great deal of choice because I think many markets are going to say that they're going electric by a certain date. I think what's interesting, Ian, is just how much of an impact it's going to have. Will the infrastructure be ready? So will we see a scenario where those dates are slowly pushed back for objective reasons, i.e. not enough charging points? But what I'd like to discuss is the fact, you know, we we had our Green Last Mile report a while back where we have all this, unfortunately, I, I think it's greenwashing. You know, are we really doing the right things at the right time? And are we setting the right priorities? Because I'm going to go back to basics. Isn't it really easier if we start by educating drivers, consumers to do the right thing? What I mean by that is, do you need to drive with your aircon full on, with your window open, putting you know your foot down the minute you see a green light with suboptimal vehicles? Uh, I recently, by the way, we've done this one before, but I received a package which was a box about this size with, are you ready for this, with a Parker pen inside? That's just not right, is it? Because of, if you strip back and say, well, look, you're not going to be interested in the environmental aspects, that reduces the number of parcels you can fit in a van. Absolutely. So, you know, I think, I think there's an awful lot that can be done now, really simple stuff, just by educating. You know, we didn't talk, and I, I know I come back to this again and again, but I think it's important. We just need to drum it in. Educating the consumer, the customer, Does he really need things so fast? Uh, Can he have like, you know, the Amazon day type service once a week? Can he pick up even better? Can he pick up from a Pudo or a Locker? And I think La Poste, Francis La Poste, may have recently announced a program where they will show the environmental impact of each parcel. Now, I don't know how that's integrated into checkout. So if you're buying from a third party retailer, will you be get the information from La Poste as to how much what the environmental impact is? But I think you've made a great point there about the speed of delivery. If we can educate customers, well, if you're the faster you get something, it could have a greater environmental impact. So customers need the information to be able to make a decision, right? I think that's not there at the moment. I think if you talk to most consumers, they wouldn't know. And I think your, your point about driver behavior is, is, is massive. I, it irks me when I see delivery vans left idling while somebody does a delivery. With the price of petrol now or diesel or whatever, right? So there's clearly as a driver education part of that as well. I mean, some people might say, well, there's wear and tear in your vehicle. But now how, how many vehicles that are sold these days, Mark, have that automatic stop start? So if you stop at the lights and put the car into neutral, if it's a manual, or if you just put your foot on the brake, if it's an automatic, the engine turns off anyway. So... I'm, on the, I'm at the risk of ranting and raving a little bit there, Mark. <laughs> you know what, Ian? I think it's a really good point. But if you think about it, it's the it's all about education. Because if the customer is interested and understands the issue, he or she will want to understand the environmental impact. If the driver is educated in the effects, and what does it mean for me? Because I think the problem is most drivers won't understand what it means for them. And if they're being pushed to deliver more parcels, then they're going to want to be faster. They will put their foot down. But at least we can do things like, do they really need the aircon full with the window open? Those sort of things. But I thought I really like the point you made about the, the La Poste idea of showing people how green or ungreen. But simple enough to show if someone clicks locker, 
the locker is in a green color, that is a green option. If you click express delivery on demand, that's red. And probably Pudos are in the middle, so they can be, I don't know, orange. I, I think there's also, it might be Waitrose in the UK, the supermarket, they have some electric vehicles. And so you'll be told if your delivery is being done by, via an electric vehicle. Now, if you can actually actively select that, it becomes consumer driven. The consumer is choosing electric delivery. And that's just in the interim. If we look at what, say, Canada Post is doing, committing to 100% electric fleet, which let's just, I guess if you're in Europe, you think, oh, well, electric fleet, whoopie do. Canada is a very, it's, it's in Canada, the second biggest country in the world, right? So we're talking about some serious distances that are being covered there. We're not just talking about replace, swapping out a few diesel or petrol vans in the cities to replace them with electric vehicles. You're talking about big trucks that are trans- transporting, you know, containers of mail around the country. Let's talk about your point about infrastructure then, Mark. It's easy for us to say, well, hang on, we'll go develop the, the vehicles, but the infrastructure has to be there. Is this, is the cost of the infrastructure really just going to fall upon, in this case, Canada Post or whoever is operating the fleet in the various markets? Is, is, is it, or is it, well, how do you think that's going to be overcome? I think partly, but Ian, if you, if you take it further, because the line haul vehicles, the big trucks that go between the various nodes, Nodes at night generally. That's easy because you know you, you you can have limited numbers of charging points. But the fleet, which is probably several tens of thousands of vehicles, if it's subcontracted, where do those vehicles go to be charged at night? Are they you know if it's one man in a van, where's that infrastructure? Do you have that infrastructure in place? Because current technology still doesn't allow you in most cases to do that in half an hour. There are no really good solutions for you know a Formula One type battery pack switch. So it's it's really not so easy. And when we did the Green Last Mile report recently at Last Mile Experts, one of the things that came out is all of these plans, which look super sexy on paper, just can't realistically happen if they're going to happen at scale. Because remember, it's not just Canada Post. It's going to be other players in the market. Probably there are going to be government restrictions on combustion fuel, fuel vehicles. And I think we just really need to understand, can we do this physically? Can we put the infrastructure in place in time? And it's not just Canada Post. The government has to do it because there has to be, for for the courier vehicles, infrastructure that is dispersed. You made a very good point about the contracted delivery fleet. So if you've currently got a, a contractor who has to fill the car up, vehicle up once every one or two or three days, depending on the kind of route they're doing, they're going to have to charge their car at night at home to be able to do the run each day. Now, is there is there home electricity supply capable of doing that? Is the local power grid capable of supporting that if you've all of a sudden got more and more electric cars at night? And we've seen just recently in Australia, you know, a bit of a, an energy crisis in Australia, of all places, we are going to the poll politics of that, everybody. But it goes to show that there are still hurdles to be overcome. But I want to emphasize, Mark, just because there are hurdles doesn't mean that we shouldn't overcome them. Absolutely. I think, Ian, there's no question that we're going in the right direction. The, The only thing from my perspective is, you know, you have things that are considered sexy, like electric vehicles, but you don't look at the basic simple stuff like educating consumers, educating drivers, educating people and fulfillment that you don't pack a pen in a huge box and ship air. So there's an awful lot that can be done. I mean, even another one, solar cells on the top of a sorting center. Sorting centers are huge buildings. And I know that most new ones actually do have solar panels, but there's so much that can be done. Challenge for me is that there are too few holistic approaches. And I think it's done based upon, I think a whim is not the right word, but you know, if someone happens to see, hey, there's kudos to do this, they'll do it. But you don't have these holistic, in my opinion, strategies by large players to really make things change for the better. So when you when you say holistic though, Mark, we no longer mean just the organization itself. It's also the organization's customers, whether it's e-commerce players or whoever, and the consumers, the end recipients, the people who shop online, educating them as to how to minimize their environmental impact. There is so much we can talk about with this topic, Mark, but I think it's really important. I'd love to see, hear people's comments, hear people's comments, read people's comments. So comment below. Let us know what you think on this topic. I'll also include the links to a couple of episodes of the Post Hub podcast I've recorded on this topic. And Mark, you've got the Green Last Mile report from Last Mile Experts. I'll stick a link to that as well. Highly recommend that you have a look at that. Thanks for watching this video on YouTube. Please remember to hit the like, subscribe, and notification buttons so that, well, it just helps us 
keep doing this stuff. You'll get a notification in your LinkedIn feed, not your LinkedIn feed, your YouTube feed. It'll come up. Say so you've got a new video from the last mile profits. What a wonderful thing that is. Eh? So please do subscribe to our channel and help us keep this videos free. Marta Krzyzewski, thanks for being part of the last mile profits today. Thank you. And thank you everybody.